Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind, Transform Your Life radio podcast and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Isabel Chiara. Isabel and I are going to be talking on the topic, how to transform self-destructive eating behaviors into self-compassionate dialogue. Welcome, Isabel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this beautiful podcast of yours that you just told me was seen all over worldwide. <laughs> it's so exciting. Well, you're very welcome. Yes, you're very welcome. Awesome. Um, I'm going to enjoy your conversation today because, you know, I'm always looking to, um, uh, to learn about nutrition, which is what we're going to be talking about. Um, all right. So let me give you a short bio on Isabel. Isabel's new book, Eat Your Words is not the typical self-help diet book. Instead, Isabel's approach is a more narrative, semi-autobiographical exploration of the sensual and painful relationship to food so many of us can't escape. The book expertly coaches from life lessons and experiences of the uber-relatable, curvaceous girl's entry into womanhood. Her hearty Italian appetite makes for a complex carb tale about the depth of her relationship with self-nourishment. And as um, Isabel corrected me before we got on the air, is that it's not a diet book and we're not going to use the word diet. So, <laughs> so let's jump right in. Isabel, can you share with our listeners your own journey through body shame and self-discovery. Hmm. So, of course, um, on my own for my own journey, um, I food and eating and weight has always been a big point of contention my whole life. So it was through this non-acceptance of you know, the way I eat and always that focus on the food and like, I shouldn't have eaten it. And the words that I used all the time, I couldn't have eaten. Oh my God, you know, praying, help me God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't want to eat this. Um, all of those things that actually became a very like almost obsessive, ab addictive type of behavior. So um, it was about like making myself as you know my whole years of growing up or this character also I, I portray a lot of the stories through this character to really bring the point home that um, we were almost like almost like an anvil on on us you know like a weight that mm -hmm. we're not gonna I'm not gonna let up on myself I'm like like there's a certain way to eat there's a certain way to be with food there's a certain and I can't do it or every day I try to do it and every day there's a new diet and you know it's certainly reinforced um, by the media mm -hmm. all the time so it's it's that kind of a journey um, of it's been a journey of my life and it's been a journey of you know the kind of needs to be come to terms with on some level and mm -hmm. uh, I think the body suffered suffered in it in that you know it's um not listening to the body not being in the body um not paying attention to like like many times uh, a lot of times in the book i just the character says she's walking around with you no know, like a head and a different a head and another body like they're separated <laughs> uh, which, when I no connection to, right right when right, i talk right. to people it's a very common feeling common existence like a life existence that is happening on some level so it's kind of like an introspection um the book on this whole journey of the body and coming to terms with the body mind and spirit on some level okay yeah. so how did you transition from walking around kind of you know you know discombobulated which is a word right. um where you're not connected and then you got to the point where um, uh, you're going to eat your words because you're not going to be um, telling yourself these negative things about right. food. 
what was your transition? Did you go to a therapist? Um, how did you get through that? Okay, so there's been a million people involved in this process because okay. you're always, you know, as you know, person that's that's the focus. And you're trying to come up with a resolution. You're it's almost like I became a researcher, and mm. I whoever but it was really really a journey of finding you know what was really um in my my own soul what was really like what's up with me like what's bothering me what's the what's the pain about what's the what's the dialogue about but a lot okay. of the um so par part of the solution which is where the title kind of kind of came in and by the way the title kind of like came to me one day and the, it also became part of the process Right, exactly. eat your words. Like, what was I saying to myself on a daily basis? What was I saying to myself before I ate, after I ate, how I ate? You know, what was I saying? And if your body and your mind are disconnected, you, you can't you can't even figure out what is being said. So, um, what happens is when you take yourself to task on some level, when you start to really be conscious. Um, first, I knew. I needed to be in my body mm -hmm. so that required you know like a lot of you know you could do you know and people for different people are, it's different things you know i started to okay. walk i started to work out but only because i needed to feel my body i was out of it mm. okay so Got you. that's a real key and then um the other thing was as long as you're feeling your body, then you get to hear what you're saying to yourself. So okay. the words started to become more conscious. Um, and what I have really, another thing I really have realized through late, lately is that being out of the body, part of how you can be out of your body is to be really busy. You know that busy thing that everybody does, right? Mm -hmm. And then if, right, you're busy, right, right. if you're busy, then you all you also have those words that are saying, oh, I'm so busy and I didn't eat all day long and I'm starving. And so now I have a permission to just eat whatever I want, whatever I want, wherever I am. Right. And it doesn't That's matter true. what it, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. We say to ourselves, oh, mm. oh, poor us. <laughs> okay. You know, okay. You can have whatever right now, right? Okay. You work okay. hard. You know whatever the story is, right? Yeah, but, I'm, but I'm understanding has, it, right? Got it. Yeah. So everybody has what whatever story allows them to, again, not, you know, eat nourishing or just okay. eat off the cuff or just you know eat a lot okay. because you can't even yeah. So where did your eating habits come from? I know you mentioned that you're Italian and Italian has a lot of carbs and pastas and things like that. So um, is that what it was? Except your for, childhood except, foods, that kind of thing? Yeah. Except for Italians are for the most part thin. <laughs> so, so I don't want, that's not really an excuse. So we can't but, use that excuse, right? right, right. It's not really an excuse because everyone I know that's Italian is thin. So um, I think that it was more um, hmm. the, the focus. I'm, I mean, I'm in the restaurant business also. I started my whole life, in, I'm in the family restaurant business. And so okay. my focus in life became food. So, mm -hmm. so it's, you know, at an early age, it be just was, okay, we're having, you know, we're, we met when we made food, we made like huge meals, you know, I'm sure right. a, a very common thing. We made huge meals. Um, I didn't never knew what a portion was, you know, mm -hmm. like portion, like we, I never used that word until I was in my you know, 30s and 40s. So right, um, right, right. I would go to, when I would go to people, I would go to my friend's homes and they would have like a little bit of rice, a little bit of, you know, meat. And, and I was like, you know, confused when I was younger because <laughs> And that was never what happened at our house. So it was, that was part of the. All right. I'm understanding now. I'm understanding now. And yeah. Part, and part of like my men, uh, the mentality that really showed up um, in my whole scope of 
thought, my whole uh, thought pattern was that, you know, things became like a well, part of what the restaurant that I, business that I'm in is that we have a buffet. So I had, I think that if you have that in your business and you see that all the time, you, I ended up with this like buffet mentality, right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. It was like uh, almost like, I always heard Mike's like the more the merrier. So if I went out with yeah. you know friends, it'd be like the more the merrier, the more food we have, the better right. we are. So I had right. to you know, you develop stories along the way that really reinforce the way okay. the way to, the way to the plate the way to the plate <laughs> the, way, the way we metabolize the way we digest okay all right all right so at some point in time you developed body shame you took me through to self-discovery so um at one point in time i guess you did it you developed the fact that body shame because you're eating so much and maybe you're a you curvaceous girl um uh, that was in what people were seeing on the media and um you just so talk us through the body shame part for someone that's listening, right? Yeah, so I think that the body shame comes with, you know, you start a comparison of others that, um, you know, you see people that are a certain size, you see people that are, um, you know, a certain way, a certain, you know, and then you start looking at yourself as different. Like, why, why am I not like that? You start to, those are the words that start to go through through you know the he our heads and why are we not like that? Why don't we look like that? Why is our body different than that? Um, but then you know when as you talk to people, they're like, wait, why don't I look like you? <laughs> you know, but it doesn't <laughs> matter because we already internalized right. that there's something wrong wrong with, with us, with right? Us. Oh, whatever we look like, yeah. we want to be someone else. True, right. true. And people, yeah. you know, start to say, oh, for a little girl, you're eating a lot. Um, and then you start to make a correlation with I'm eating a lot and there's weight here and uh, oh, like there's something wrong with what's happening in my body. Like I'm not okay, right? right. It starts to develop. Right. But then you, you know, if that's, I, I always say like, if that's the, the focus that's going through our mind that I'm not okay on some level, then all we're doing is looking out in the universe, right? As the bigger picture and we're saying, oh, if that's not okay, then I'm not okay, and this isn't okay, and my thoughts aren't okay, and I don't want to, I don't want to speak because maybe those aren't going to be okay either. Because look at how this person's real. You know, we start to get a reflection of what's happening outside of us, and yeah. start internalizing all of that. And yeah. yeah, well, it's common for a lot of things. You know, um, yeah, I've always. Um, talked about when I read Michelle Obama's book um, and uh, Becoming, she starts out by talking about how even when she was a lawyer, even when she was successful, she always felt that she wasn't enough because that she mm -hmm. came from the South side of Chicago and her parents were poor and all that. So regardless of what's going on with us, if we're comparing and we're looking and we're, we're having this conversation that we're not enough, yeah, mm -hmm. then, it's, then it's an issue. Uh, but the most common thing is is weight and what you see when you look in the mirror. But then there's a flip side where people that are thin, that are bulimic, they're seeing fat or you know weight in right. the mirror, and it's not even there. So you're you're quite right when somebody says you know someone else might look at you and says I want to be like her. Yeah, and um, uh, there's always this in internal you know um, conflict and conversation and self dialogue that we mm -hmm. have with ourselves that says that we're not enough, you know, yeah. but it's our breasts yeah. are not yeah. big enough or, or too small or whatever yeah. it is that, that always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a great story. When I hear this story. It's so good. I was mm -hmm. on big, I was on a trip. I was on a spiritual trip and I was in Nepal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in Nepal, everybody's like really, really super thin. Uh, <laughs> when they're walking around, like no one's like, so I was there and I was, tan and I was heavy, you know, I mean, I mean, I was bigger than your average Nepalese person, right? And the, all, these kids started following me around. And that was com comparatively to the group I was with, too. I was I was bigger than them, right? So, them, right, right. So, so these kids were following me around. I'm not talking about two or three. I'm talking about like 20 kids were following me around. And I was like, wow. I go, it's like so weird. I was like, hi, you want a pencil? You know, I had like pencils. I had stuff for them, right? And mm -hmm. they were like, 
but they weren't looking at me like, oh my God, like there's something wrong with you. They were looking at me like with the most loving eyes I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. And I looked at what the guy. That is a good story. <laughs> the guy I was with, and I go, oh my God, look at this. They're, look at all these kids following me around. Like they're surrounding me and everything. And it just felt like really loving. And he, and he said to me, he goes, that's because you look like you're like wealthy and you're, you're because of uh, your body, like wealthy and they're trying to follow you. And they think that you're like, a, you know, royal, like royal. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so it was funny. It was like, the, it was like a great experience to see how yeah. people will hold that in one country and hold it in another, like based on how they were raised and, you know, so it was well, that's very interesting. I've never heard that before, but you know, I'm Guyanese. I, I was born in Guyana and mm -hmm. we have a lot of Indians in Guyana because that is how the, you know, the, the slave trade and the that came, you know, whatever. So um, I've always had the connection, but the, in Guyana, um, when you're thin, people think you're sick. So when mm -hmm. you are, or when you have some weight on you, they think that you're happy <laughs> and, and everything, and everything is going great with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and everything yes, is going everybody's great with you. so different. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing. Um, and then we right. have to transfer okay. that to ourselves. What was that? We get to own that for ourselves too. Yeah. yeah. So that's true because yeah, when, you know, um, uh, weight means that you're eating, weight means that you're happy, weight means that, um, right, yeah, so, so that's awesome, that's a great story, I love that, I love that. Um, okay, so one of the questions I have here for you, Isabel, is um, why do you think we purposely distract ourselves when making food choices to the detriment of our health? So, you know, um, you started by talking a while ago that, you know, um, we choose no you 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 know you didn't choose portion sizes and maybe if you're busy then you make bad choices because you're thinking that you are you are um rewarding yourself kind of thing but other than that why do you think that somebody puts food in their mouth that they know is bad for them and they continued it what is the psychology behind that <laughs> Okay, but I'm not so I'm not a psychologist. I just know be I just been looking at this behavior for a long time. Okay, so okay, all right. <laughs> so um I what I think is that we distract ourselves because we uh we don't want to feel. Mm. Like we don't want to feel like That's so true. I think a lot of times yeah. that when we do choose to eat certain things we are actually uh, picking, like, almost like we distract ourselves, you know, maybe maybe the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing kind of thing. So we're mm -hmm. not, um, because a lot of times we start to eat because we start to have to feel something's coming up. We don't, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is. It could be happy, it could be sad, it could be, you know, like anger and stuff. You know, anger is a great. Or even bored. I eat when I'm bored. <laughs> right. Yes. Just mm -hmm. bored them, you know, yes. you, like, or there's, when there's nothing going on, there's still something going on in your body, right? Right. right. So if there's something going on in your body, but you're not present to it, or you just, or you don't want to know what it is, or, you know, for whatever reason, you're not used to it. Or maybe I think a lot of, times people have um d don't recognize their feelings or they judge their feelings right before mm. they even know what it is something's coming up all right something's coming up i mean what better way you know you always hear we always hear like people i mean i'm a nighttime eater right that i could do all day long with no food but then at night i'm like a wreck yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Back, right? Yeah. but um because every emotion from the day maybe was just piled up you know for that one for not for nighttime or for that one time and it's all starting to come up and then we're like uh you know just yeah let's just go for it you know, yeah that was my biggest struggle for the longest time mm -hmm. i couldn't stop eating at night um it's a little under control now but <laughs> but that was my biggest struggle for a while what yeah. mm -hmm. 
But we, if we ask people, like, oh, well, you could replace it with something, is there anything better? <laughs> like, replace it with reading or replace it with a bath or, you right, know. Right. Well, I did hear something, I think it was Deepak Chopra or someone I was listening to that says that whenever you feel that urge, get up and walk or get up and do something. That's what you're talking about. Replace it with something. But if, you know, most people just want to eat and they just eat, you know, who's thinking about replacing it? Right, just, right, exactly. right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, good. Yeah. No, go ahead. You were saying something. Well, I was going to say one of the things I really applied to my life because the more you tell, we tell ourselves, don't do this or diet, or right. this is where we are going to, I think this is where you were going to go. Um, right. The more we tell ourselves that, the more resistance that we show to that behavior, right? It, like, right. I'm not going to eat after five or six, right? All right. That doesn't work. Um, because then you want to eat the five right. or six, right? <laughs> you're, really, yes. you're really telling your right. brain, okay, hmm, she wants to eat after five. Yeah. She wants to eat yeah. more after five or six. Yeah. You know? So the brain doesn't understand we're not going to eat. It just understands we're eating after five or six. And plus right. it right. becomes like this rebellious person, yeah. right? You know, right. I mean, if, if one were rebellious, you know, there's not, there's no stopping them. So, you know, it's like thrown out the window. So I decided to lose the word diet and I decided to do something different for myself. And that was add more nourishing things to my, to my day, you know, not okay. allow, not, not be, you know, first, first started with being in my body. And then I said, let me give myself food. Instead of saying, I'm going to take away food and I'm not going to eat this. I started giving myself different foods. Okay. You know, and I allowed myself to have whatever, but I would give myself more nutritious foods. But so there was, I started creating a new mindset. The new mindset became, okay, I'm going to, you know, I was totally resistant to this, but um, I started, you know, finding a place that had green drinks so I could ha have green drinks, which okay. took the edge off of things. And it made me feel, made me feel in my body. So instead of going into the busyness of my whole day, I would do the, I'm going to add a green drink, just one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of taking away, because I think that's another not nice mindset yeah. for us, right? right? Right. Instead of taking something away, I was going to give myself things. Okay. You know, if someone I, wants, likes eating at night, um, uh, you, instead of, of having the bad things we want to eat at night, you would, what would you give? What, what did you give yourself to replace that? Because a green so, drink is usually a daytime drink. What were you, what do you do at night? <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is, is at five o'clock, four o'clock and five o'clock, I would drop, you, you know, a lot of people drop sugar their sugar levels drop right and they uh -huh. start to crave something so right. i at that time started having something like um i would make like bean dips you know some bean dips okay. some hummus and carrots and, and okay. stuff like that okay healthy but i would food. but right. i would still right. allow right. myself to have whatever i wanted for the other meals i didn't want to say no oh. to that because if i started to say no then um. We're done. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so right. Okay. I would have, you know, and I started to, I started to to add this green drink, and then at the four or five o'clock, I started to have another thing, even if it was like my meal. So if I, I went to work, I'd pack a meal. Okay. For myself, and I would eat that at like five or so. I was really hungry. I would eat that at five or six. Okay. okay. You know, and then yeah. at nighttime, if I went home, I would make sure I had like four or five different choices, you know, that I could have. So, right. you know, so I also limited, I also didn't have like this whole array of like all these restaurants I could stop by on my way home. I would say, <laughs> oh, if I go to this restaurant, I could have this item, you know, okay. but I never said like no to different things. Right. Um, so, and at home I would have like different, all different kinds of salads and stuff like that. I would have popcorn. There's some okay. good, really good popcorns. Um, mm -hmm. And I would have um, sometimes 
cheese. A lot of people can't have dairy. I would have like cheese and some, you know, glue, some kind of crackers or something, right? right. So I'd have okay. something to look forward to. So you have to have like, you have to have an artillery uh, uh, of all these different foods that you can have, that you, that are, that you like. Right. Okay. Like, and that you can have, and then you have, and okay. then, in, and then the words that you get to say to yourself are like, oh my, I have all of these choices. Because the truth is, you're, if yes. you have a vision of eating like pasta every day, or like, what's your favorite food, Myrna? Me, I'm like curry, curry rice. You know, you went to okay. Nepal, I like curry, you know, like, you know, rice and peas and curry or something okay. like that, right? So that, those aren't, I mean, that's fine, right? So yeah. you could make like, rice and peas for yourself that you could have like an everyday version of that where you put different vegetables maybe you would add more vegetables to that right mm -hmm. right and a little bit less rice if you wanted or you know there's nothing wrong with rice you know yeah. and the curry but it's a carb right mm -hmm. no, but, it's, but it really doesn't really matter if it's a carb or not right. it's just right. you can have carbs you can have you know, just now you're going to, you're just starting to give yourself other more nutritional things. Maybe you want to give yourself more vegetables in that and rice, mm -hmm. but I'm not, but I'm not prescribing less of anything. You know, I'm just okay. saying, I'm just saying to feel nourished, like things right. to, you know, maybe you want to choices. Maybe wanna, like, right. Right. a little bit more chicken, you know, like to, but um, we, there's nothing wrong with having that, but maybe you have it at, it's your favorite thing. So you should have it. You should have it. Like at five o'clock, maybe at five o'clock instead of eight o'clock, and then you have other favorite things then. So right, you're right. still feeding yourself and you're nourishing yourself because now you're like, oh, I got, I'm, I had my curry. I love it. I just love my curry, you know? And then yeah. you, and then, then you're you not having it. cravings yeah. because when you eat is because you're having cravings or you're bored or you, right. you know, you're trying to stuff down some kind of emotion or something like that. So, yeah. so that's awesome. All right, so um, how can those of us struggling with weight and a poor relationship to food face the issue head on? So what do we do to tackle this head on? And we can't control our impulses and um, we just can't stop ourselves from making those bad choices. Right, okay, so the first thing I say is to start to start a mindset start creating an intention for yourself and start creating a mindset that you're in the middle of the process right mm -hmm. i always like to say we're always in the middle of the process okay and that we are shifting we're always shifting we're always changing so even though it looks really bad <laughs> <laughs> it does it always looks really bad before it gets really good okay right it's and, true. It's true. and it's mm -hmm. not going to and maybe it's not going to be perfect, but we're only, all we're trying to do is create change, create a change, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to allow ourselves to, we're, we, we want to get ourselves and we're inviting ourselves to feel better about our relationship with food. So what does that mean? That means we're in the middle of this, of this, we're in the middle of learning that our relationship with food is changing and shifting. We're going to say shifting. It sounds a little nicer than changing because sometimes mm -hmm. people, when you say changing, it gets really like, oh my God. You know, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna say it's shifting, right? And so the what I we're gonna and we're gonna start to use the words that okay, you know, because the the truth is when it comes to food, I have had this experience. It's like there's a lot of anxiety in it because we know we're choosing the right. We're not. We know we're not choosing something that's great for our body. So then we and we're still going for it. So we're doing. We're going against ourselves right so we want to really neutralize that we're for ourselves so we want to have what we like and so i say um you know cr have 30 or 20 items in the refrigerator that you can grab at any point that are that you are that you're aligned with that you know are is nurturing to you that you know will be good for you and um and you know plan people hate this but plan really plan out if you have the foods there it's kind of like a plan you don't have to mm -hmm. say oh i'm gonna have this at one o'clock or whatever. but there's kind of what starts to happen is your brain starts to structure around it okay right 
And when mm -hmm. we start, to, then we start to say, okay, so here's chicken and here's this and, you know, and here's some salad. I get a little dressing here, you know what I mean? Whatever you have, right? And mm -hmm. you can eat every hour, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's too much food, though. <laughs> it's, it's too much food, but let your body, to, like your body gets to tell us that, but you could, you could allow yourself, you could say, mm -hmm. you know what? I want to eat every hour. Look, I got all this. You know, that erases that little scarcity mentality. Like, oh my God, if I'm on a diet, oh my God. That is, that so, is, that right? is. Mm -hmm. so we get to, we, we get to look in the refrigerator and like, okay, well, I'm going to bring four items with me to work just in case. So now right. you have a just in case arsenal, right? And then okay. you have a just in case arsenal at home, wherever you are. And if you're, and if it's summer, you know, you could have those ice packs, you know, a lot of foods get delivered mm -hmm. with ice packs. And right. then you can just bring your food wherever you are. Um, I do that because I used to stop all the time. My, my, you know, for me, my favorite thing was just stopping. Once you, I stopped at one of the gas stations, you know, to have food there, forget it. It was over. It was a done deal. And I, listen, it took me, a, it took me a year to stop that one. Yeah. You know, so, you know, and now I can say I don't have to stop at every one. <laughs> you know, I stop sometimes, you know, some do, right? I stop sometimes. Yeah, my I husband used to be like one. that. We wouldn't go out without having to stop at the gas station. I've never had that, but you know, I, I hear you. Right. And there's nothing good at the gas station. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so they just only don't have vegetables there and salads. <laughs> right. I'm, no, right. My book is starts out with the whole um me being at the gas station, kind of like in hiding, like in case somebody I knew showed up. And it, it's a very funny scene. Um, yes, it's humorous it's too. That's because awesome. that's what people are doing. They're hiding because that's what the shame is really about because we don't want people to see how we eat, what we eat. Right, you know? right, 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 right. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good segue into your book. Um, tell us about your book, Eat Your Words, you know, why you wrote it. What do you want um, someone that's reading it to walk away with? You know, what's the message really of the mm -hmm. book? So um, actually I heard the book like years ago. I started to write a book like years ago and then it became about food and, you know, and I was like, I can't write about this. I don't know what to do. Like I, you know, didn't have a solution, but it was really the thing I knew most, you know, and, you know, people say you write, but what you, what your like Achilles heel is. Mm -hmm. And so it definitely was. And um, so I began to write this book as a just stories, you know, and it was a way to be conscious for myself. Like it was really I wrote it for myself, you know, and, uh, like a journal thing. And it was it was it was really I was really writing a book, but okay. um, it, was the, it, it was the stories of my life, you know, and okay. um, so the the goal was to for me to get to some kind of resolution in my life and i thought it was going to be a resolution like okay just do this this and this and i'm gonna get over it and you know but the right. truth is after i finished this book um and it was really good <laughs> there was i didn't have a, I still didn't have a resolution mm. you know and i and there's not there i just realized for everybody so different there's not a resolution for everybody one and done. Like I'm going to say, Hey, Myrna, do this. And then like, you're good. There, there isn't. And it's, um, a lot of trials and tribulations and stuff. I mean, if you, the, the book is actually funny because they're all my antidotes and, um, this, this character, she's hysterical and what she says and how she lives her life and how she looks, um, you know, immerses herself because she's in this family business, immerses herself in this spirituality where she starts studying with um, healers and um, starts studying, you know, uh, esoteric arts, um, which is becomes her passion. But she was actually that brought her more outside of herself. Right. Instead of bringing it in, it was like more outside of her. And um so the stories are the stories are there for people to really understand that 
they're not they're not struggling i mean the, the stories are so personal they're, they're not struggling in this arena by themselves this is really right. to bring the behaviors to consciousness and to show that 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 you know me anybody it's not the only one going through this i mean most of the world is going through this on some level sure. um sure. and so it was, <laughs> yeah and it's to look yeah. at it yeah. it's to mm -hmm. look at this and say hey you know what i do this you know this is my thing oh my god i say the same things and now you become conscious of what the words are and how they are affected ourselves our behaviors and um and through that, there is healing that can be done. You know, when you see something that somebody else is doing and you hear what their process is, and I bring up a lot of processes also, you know, that, um, you know, to get in the body that um, are kind of, you know, things people could do or, you know, they could try or they could look at or they could probably do it themselves. And that also helps people to heal themselves just knowing, you know? Like, I always believe that um, if you, he if like, let's just say I come and, and do something and I heal, then the consciousness of the world around you is able to shift also. Like, if it took me five years or 20 years to get to some point, the per a person that I work, I'm also a transformational coach, right? I, that person doesn't need to spend 20 years getting what I got, you know, right. they could get it in, I could say one thing to them and they could heal, right? You know, okay. your words, your words, when you speak to are so powerful that people right. heal just by being listening to your program or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was very interesting when you were talking about, because yes, I am, you know, I am very um, I have a great affinity for Buddhism and, and Nepal. In fact, it was one of my dreams to um, to go to Nepal and um, you know and, and do that spiritual journey that you're talking about. Either go to an ashram or or hike the Himalayas. It, it was yeah. you know one of my bucket lists. I got close. I um, I went to India, but I, I you know I, I went to um, you know Delhi and you know Agra and and those places. I didn't get to Nepal. But um, my question to you is um, when you when you embarked on that spiritual journey, usually that spiritual journey helps you go inside and understand what your triggers are and, and, and why you need food and what you're stuffing down. So did it help at all that journey with your inner work? Okay, so I wasn't on the journey to figure out my food at that point. I was just okay. on a journey to figure out myself. Same thing. <laughs> <And did it, laughs> right? right. It, it was so, um, hmm. and through that, heal the food thing. Um, well, did, yeah, that's what I course. said. Uh, are you right, kidding right. me? Hmm. Of course, that has made me, like, really look at things so deeply and really... Yeah it was about really connecting and stuff. And you're asking me about that. It's funny. You're asking, it's not funny, but it's, you're asking me about that connection with the body. So when I yeah. was in those spaces, yes. Right? right. I was totally in tune. I mean, I'm yeah. yes, but if I'm not, I kept my okay. two worlds separate. Separately. <laughs> and I didn't think, All right. okay. I didn't mm -hmm. think to put, the, I couldn't, I didn't even know to put them together. I thought, oh, this is my spiritual world and this is my business world and like the right, two right, not right, me. Right. But it's so yeah. crazy because when I did figure it out and start to pull them both together, oh my God, yeah, that helped business, that helped, you know, everything. I mean, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have ever been able to write a book either. You know, right, yeah, have, that's, you know, that's great internal work because that's all about meditation and all about, stillness and, and going inside and understanding who you are so like yeah i'm totally into that so yeah. <laughs> i'm jealous so that's great all right so um so what i think you just said is your book um eat your words is um a journey with stories showcasing you know your processes and how you dealt with you know some humorous situations in life regarding food but 
where does the eat your words come from? And I'm assuming it's um, internal dialogue. The eat your words is internal dialogue. And it right. starts mm -hmm. also, I think uh, it starts with, uh, the, with the origins of the family also, because I think that that mm -hmm. always plays key parts in any person's psyche, right? Mm -hmm. Where you came from, like the, the real makeup of your environment is so yes. important to how it shapes you and how you look at life or how one would look at life. And um, so it starts there. And, um, and through this character, her name is Gianna Giovanni. Um, so it's, okay. it's written through this character. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's as if the character had a life of its own. She almost became the muse of the book. And okay. through her, there was like the sky's the limit in the in what was happening and um, the dialogue and the stories and the you know I was able to um, remember a lot of things and really make huge points on different spectrums of the words and it is the inner dialogue. It's okay. all about the inner dialogue, but the inner dialogue, as you can imagine, is kind of runs your life and it yes. could be conscious or unconscious it was a, so, so super Both times it's unconscious right yeah. and it was yeah. the words that i would say as my mantra like oh i don't care you know like really? when, <laughs> my the biggest words were oh i don't care but once you wow. start once you start saying i don't care it doesn't just apply to oh this person said this to me and like i don't care what they said it really apply you it really becomes what you start to say to yourself so Right. I don't care. I don't care about myself. I don't care what I put in my body. I don't care. Right. You know what I mean? It becomes your how you live your life. Yeah. You know? it's true. So yeah. it's it really important to get down to the grassroots of what we're really saying to ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. I have another. I I had this other. I have this really funny. This I I started when I started realizing what I say to myself. Like it affects every single aspect of my life. So, my I had it uh, at work. My desk was just messy, and I just couldn't empty. No matter what, like there was just piles of paper on my desk all the time. And so I'm like, so one day I realized I'm saying these words, and I go, what 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 is it that I'm saying to myself that allows me to have this messy desk all the time? And so I was like, oh. I'm like one day, like as soon as you ask yourself the question, this is why I'm saying this is like really great technique. Like as soon as you ask yourself the question, you can hear yourself saying what it is. So what I was saying to myself is, oh my God, I'm never going to finish all of this work. So it was like an energetic, like all of this work that's on my desk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I switched the words. I said, let me just try a little experiment. All right, I go, I complete everything. Every day I complete everything. Well, you're sure enough, all of those, all those papers on my desk. And if your desk gets cleaned up by this Myrna, then you can call me up and let me know that it totally worked. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a clean right, desk. Right, right. All right. But anyway, what happened is, is all of the things that were piled up started working themselves out. Even if like, let's just say I didn't, it was something I didn't have to do. It was, it worked itself out. Like it completed itself. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like the, yeah. the things, words are very important. Yes. Yeah, so my desk is very totally important. Clean. Right. It's also time. intention. Intention is very important. So when you, when you say that, that is an intention, right? Yeah. And the universe normally conspires to bring you your intention. So, yeah. so that's great. So that's awesome. So, um, how can, um, uh, you know, our listeners and those watching on TV connect with you? get a copy of your book, you know, maybe connect with you in social yeah. media. So. so I, so if anyone wants to get the first chapter just to see, you know, if they like it or if it works for them, um, okay. it's, they can go under Isabel dash Chiara, C H I A R A, but Isabel spelled also, let me do it, do it again. I S A B E L dash C H I A R A dot com and there they could get they could download the the chapter for free okay or they could just buy the book there also okay or they could go download on, a free chapter okay right or they can and, go uh, on, yeah go ahead and or amazon 
Yes, and it'll during at that point it'll lead them to um, the an Amazon link also. Okay. But um, yeah, if they join, if they get the first chapter and download it, um, we have also a. I'm about to start a uh, membership site, also that's a lot that is different processes, and it's called Healing and Activation Process Integrations. And it's called H A P I Happy Place is what I call it. And it's gonna be a lot of processes that are gonna that help people to get inside of themselves. You know, it could move things and look at things differently and um, channel themselves differently. So um, I'm really excited it that should be out in about three weeks. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited for people to read the book. It's a great read. It's fun. It's light. It's great, like for the rest of the summer. Yeah, I can just tell. I can just tell that it's um, your um, the way you write would be, you know, very humorous and entertaining. Yeah. So that was H A P I Place dot com, or is there a link from? No, the no, website? no. I'm not. If they if they go to my site and download the first chapter of the book, we'll send them a link to that because it's not up oh, yet. Okay. Oh, it's not up there. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's, that's what it's going right. to be. Okay. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> All right. Not a problem. All right, Isabel. Yeah. So as we come to the end of your show, it's been awesome talking to you. Definitely like your spirit. Definitely like the, um, you know, the fact that um, you um, you wrote the book and you you know you you went inside. Um, you, you told me you heard the words, so that means that you're you're tuned in to the, your higher power and your higher self. So that's awesome. So um, um, thank you for coming on to the show and uh, you know, expanding our minds about um, our relationship with food. I love what you said about um, uh, you know, not saying no to yourself because I know, you know I am uh, you know, a, a, a mindset coach or you know, I'm into that space. And whatever happens when you say no, that's exactly when you want to do it. You know, if you're saying, um, I'm not going to eat after five, you have to actually, you know, go into this mood where you want to eat and you have to resist it. Yeah, you have to resist the temptation. And sooner or later, you're going to give in. So I, I like what you said about, you know, um, giving yourself choices and never telling yourself no. Um, and um, so that was good. Right. So Love it. Love, um, love our discussion. And of course, um, eat your words. Very important thing. Um, you know, um, yes, you know, what we, what we say to ourselves and what we tell ourselves, even, even the body shaming thing, you know, we didn't, we didn't mm -hmm. get deep into that, but you know, um, you can tell yourself, Oh, I'm, I'm so fat, you know, nobody loves me, that kind of stuff, right. That you, right. that you tell yourself and, um, then you go eat more <laughs> right. because it's all, you, handle, you know, the psychology. can't handle the pressure of that statement. <laughs> what was that? I said, we can't handle the pressure of that statement. So we just, right. it's, circular, it's always a circular effect. Like we keep saying these things and then we makes us eat. And then, yeah. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, a great conversation. So, all right, guys. So um, I head over to um, um, uh, Isabel's uh, website, which is isabel.kier.com. Isabel dash, Isabel dash Kiara. Dash Kiara yeah. com, Right. Um, and, um, but my regular listeners know that um, they can head over to the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us. They will have a transcript of my conversation with Isabel, as well as links to her website, just in case um, you guys are not able to write it because you're driving or something. So um, Isabel, so just want to thank you again for coming on the show. Um, any last words before we wrap up? I do. I, I love the work that you're doing in the world. I think it's amazing how you're bringing all these people forward and your energy is just amazing also. And thank you so much. And just remember everybody, you're in the middle of a process. And so you're getting there. You're already there on some level. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Don't yeah. get discouraged. All right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, right. And don't eat your words. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Until next time, blessings. Thanks so much, Myrna. Thank you. You're very welcome.